Hey, how are ya? Today we're doing a roundup of AMD Sempron processors for Socket 754. Here we are on the Sempron Wikipedia page. Two models, Paris and Palermo. We checked out the Sempron 3100 Plus with the Paris Core recently. In this video, we will test all of these, every single model, and these are slightly better. Look at that, they support SSE3 instructions, the AMD 64-bit extensions, and also cool and quiet, which means when the processor is idle, it will uh, downclock and also reduce the voltage. A important difference with the specifications is the level two cache. You can see these all have double the cache, 256, and you will see later in the video, this is quite important. Here we have all the parts for our test system today. Let's talk about each part in a little bit more detail. We have a Gigabyte K8VM800M socket 754 motherboard, uses a via chipset. For RAM, we have two gigabytes of Corsair memory DDR400. This is the graphics card, one of the fastest options available for HEP. It is the ATI Radeon X850 XT with 16 pixel pipelines. This is a really decent video card. It does need Molex power at the back. We have DVI and VGA and this is the TV port. It is a double uh, slot cooling solution. Excellent performance, but a little bit hard to find and definitely you have to pay a premium to get one of these. We've upgraded the sound card. Usually I go with the Sound Blaster Live, especially when I'm testing Windows 98 as well as Windows XP. I can use one sound card to test both operating systems. In this video, we are focusing on Windows XP. So I'm using the Sound Blaster X5 for PCI. And this gives us a higher version of EAX. In Fear, for example, we can enable all the EAX modes, including EAX HD. For storage, we have a SATA SSD. It's the Western Digital Blue with 500 gigabytes. I have formatted this on a Windows 10 computer. That way the partition is nicely aligned and looking after the SSD in terms of durability and life. I really like that this platform is compatible with modern AMD coolers. We're using the boxed 125 watt AMD cooler and as always thermal pads makes it really easy uh, to do a CPU roundup like this one. Don't have to clean thermal pastes and lets me benchmark a lot of processes with minimal hassle. Once again, I'm using the Win setup from USB project. On this machine, it worked fine, but we're getting slow USB one speeds. So had to be very patient, but it installed without any issues. And also I'm using the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. This time I'm unselecting the audio and the graphics drivers because uh, in the last video we had some issues booting, but unfortunately, Why? again, it doesn't boot. The workaround is again loading the last known good configuration and this time I've narrowed it down. It's actually the SATA storage driver. So if you have this main board, do not load the SATA storage driver if you're using Snappy Driver Installer Origin. We're using the latest ATI Catalyst 10.2 driver. You can grab that from the AMD website. I manually had to install the uh, .NET version 2 framework in order to get the control center up and running. And we're using the Daniel K X5 support drivers version 5.0 for the Sound Blaster X5. Here we have the first benchmarks. It is of course Far Cry 1024 by 768 with ultra details. And all the results are in ascending order. The Sempron 2500 is the slowest with 42.9 FPS and the Sempron 3400 is the fastest with 53.8 FPS. In Doom 3, we see something interesting. Again, we're running at 1024 by 768. With the high details, I avoided the ultra detail setting because that uses uncompressed textures and wants 512 megabytes of VRAM. So here we see something odd. The 3300 plus and also the 3000 plus are behind the Sempron's with the lower model number. And this has to do with the cache. So 
In Doom 3 at least, the CPUs that have a higher clock speed but a lower cache uh, perform slower. So games can be quite sensitive to cache. So keep that in mind when picking a CPU for your needs. This is Half-Life 2, a game that traditionally runs really well on Radeon cards. This is the modern Steam version. We're running a 1024 by 768 with custom very high details. Everything is maxed out, but I didn't enable HDR rendering. And again, this is a game sensitive to cache. So the Sempron CPUs with the larger 256 kilobytes of cache outperform the uh, CPUs that have a higher model number are clocked higher but have half the cache. And we can see a similar picture in Fear running a 1024 by 768. I maxed out all the details but I've turned off anti-aliasing and soft shadows. Again, this is a game on the faster Sampron's we're getting over 60 FPS, which is nice. And we can see a little bit of cache sensitivity in this game, but not as much as in Doom 3 and Half-Life. You might be wondering, how do these Samprons compare to an Athlon 64? So, I tested the fastest Athlon 64, the 3700 Plus, and here in Far Cry we can see it does significantly better. It's the only CPU that gets over 60 FPS, close to 70. So, the 3700 Plus runs at 2.4 GHz, significantly higher, and has a huge 1 MB of level 2 cache. In Doom 3, also the Athlon 64 is much, much faster, 73.2 FPS. The trend continues in Half-Life 2, 83.4 FPS for the Athlon 64. And in Fear, we're getting around 10 extra FPS compared to the fastest Sempron, 73 FPS. So that makes Fear silky smooth on this platform. Now we tested these games under Windows XP, but the Socket 754 platform is amazing for a triple operating system, multi-purpose machine. You can cover MS-DOS, Windows 98 and Windows XP. DOS performance will be outstanding and you can go into the BIOS, lower the uh, multiplier, lower the frequency, disable the caches and then we are compatible with speed sensitive games. Windows 98 performance is also outstanding. It doesn't matter if it's OpenGL or direct 3D games, you will get hundreds of FPS in a lot of classic retro games. Performance under Windows XP with the latest games, you might struggle to hit the 60 FPS. So probably something more for the early Windows XP games, but it means with a single platform, you can cover DOS, Windows 98 and Windows XP, making this platform extremely flexible. And I believe it is affordable. Not many people chase this socket. Most go for the socket 939, which has the dual channel memory controller. Capacitors could be an issue. I have received a few comments that these mainboards came out during the capacitor plague. So you might have to do some recapping, but it's not too difficult. Now, is it worth going with an AMD Sempron over a Athlon 64? To be honest, not really, because a Athlon 64 doesn't cost you too much either and has much better performance. You get larger cache and higher clock speeds. Now, granted, the 3700 plus Athlon 64 is quite expensive. It's the highest clocked model, the most, uh, the fast processor, and they always uh, attract the premium, but you can get something running at 2.2 gigahertz with 512 kilobytes of cache, shouldn't cost you too much. And that gives you better performance at the high end for Windows XP, and you can still disable the caches and uh, lower the multiplier to be compatible with retro games under Windows 98 and MS-DOS. If you like budget retro CPUs, I will put two videos on the screen for you to check out. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.